The trouble with electricity is you can't see it. It's so much easier to talk about water and plumbing. So let's talk about water and plumbing. Now look, here's a reservoir. No, it's not a bucket, it's a reservoir. Here's a tap in a house and it needs water. And if it's sent down a big, big pipe like that, plenty of water gets through. But if it's sent down a little pipe like this, it's going to struggle. And that's worth knowing. There's another element too. If the reservoir is just over the road from the house, it gets plenty of water. But if the house is 20 miles away, you can understand that the pressure will fall off. And all of that is just the same when we talk about electricity. In the electrical context, here is the reservoir. It's a 12 volt battery. Rather than a tap, I've actually got a pump here that runs off 12 volts. But again, if there's a long cable like a long pipe to a house that was 20 miles from the reservoir, you get a fall off. That cable loses 12 volts and it might end up a mere 10. The tip, always keep the cables as short as you can, both on the way in and the way out. But we're not going to necessarily talk about the distance. We're going to talk about the type of cable that you need. And I see that this comes with instructions, which is good. Not always do you get the instructions. And it says the recommended wire size should be 2.5 millimetres square. What on earth does that mean? Especially when there are all these cables here. And these two are really fat. Just like the fat pipe. And these are actually from the car engine. And this actually starts the uh, starter motor from the battery and they have to be really, really fat. No good for the purpose here. But 2.5 millimetres square, well I'm going to take you across to look at something over here which explains that when you're trying to run what is called a diaphragm water pump and that's what this is here, you need a 2.5 millimetre square cable as explained with 36 strands and we'll have a look at that more later. Because we're going to actually look at lights. We did a piece recently on lights and I ended up by saying I'll tell you sometime what cables you need to couple up lights. Well it's interesting that these are three very very unusual ones because they actually come with a little bit of cable attached. That's a tungsten filament, that's a halogen, slightly thinner cable and this is an LED, very much thinner cable. And I can show you from this that to run interior lights you need one millimetre square cable and it has 14 strands. That's useful because lo and behold that is the product we need for the lights. And there is a label on there but they're not always easy to understand. As regards that one, I've lost the spool and I haven't got a label anyway but I think that's the one that we need. I think. But how can we check? Well, how about this? I've got something called a cable stripper and that can strip the insulation off the cable fairly easily. And the type of cable, automotive cable we use, has separate strands. And if you're prepared, if needs be, with spectacles, to count each strand one by one by one, it'll reach 14. And as we saw on the board, that is exactly the cable needed for lighting. Well, we're back to what's needed for the water pump. And if we had time, and I won't waste your time, I'd be counting these and I'd find that there were 36 strands. And that's how I established that that is 2.5 millimetre square. Other than that, well of course we might be fitting things like an extractor fan and that has 21 strands and it's 1.5 millimetre square cable. And possibly here we've got uh, information for different types of fridges. 28 strand cable, 2 millimetre square. Now I'm suggesting that if you're going to make improvements you get your dealer to do this. Unless you're good with electricity you understand this and you're prepared to have a go yourself, but only do it if you're confident, have the tools 
and have the right cable.